This episode of Film Riot is brought to you by Domain.com. Today on Film Riot, we get digitally bloody. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Go to some of your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ron Conley. And today we're jumping back into some effects from our Halloween sketch. This week we're looking at how you can get a bloody mess without making a mess. So, bumper. To refresh your memory, here's the shot. I wanted to have just a ridiculous, over-the-top, bloody disaster, but obviously I can't stain my walls and rug with blood, so instead we decided to do it all digitally. So first, we started out with our original lockdown shot, which is this right here. No need for a plate on this one, all we need is the main shot, but we will need a bunch of blood assets. And once we've gathered all those, we bring our main shot and all the assets in. Like this one, this one, and so on. But now, with all that in, I'll drop my footage in and start placing the assets. Because this is a locked off shot, 95% of this is like photoshopping a still frame. Just place in the assets where I want them, add a blending mode, and tweak it to make it fit perfectly. With each one, I adjust the opacity if needed, and then put some layers into 3D so that we could match the correct perspective for that placement in our shot. And then we just mask around the ones if needed, and finally tie them all together to make sure that they were all the same color. We added a tint effect so it was consistent across all the blood. Which is easy enough, you just add tint, matte black, and white to red and you're done. Then to make sure that they're all fitting into the scene properly, we add some blur to match their distance and grain to match our camera's profile. Next, we'll add a camera to the scene and a point light, which we'll adjust later. For that slow bleeding out under Eris, we used an asset from Rampant Design's paint pack, popped it in, put it in 3D so we could position it for the correct perspective, then added tint again to make sure the color was staying consistent. Next, we added CC glass to it. We did this so that the blood will have a variation of color from the environment light that we put in. We just toy around with the settings until we have a look that matches our scene. Once it's placed, set CC glass to point light. Then if we look at our shot here, we see that there seems to be moonlight coming in from the left. So we move the point light in the scene until it matches the angle of our actual light. Next, change the blending mode to multiply and then add a slight blur. Now we'll mask around the area that Eris is sitting. Again, since this is a locked off shot and Eris isn't moving, we don't need to roto, which is lovely. After that, we add grain in like we talked about before, so it matches our original shot. And we waited till now to do that since it's faster because After Effects doesn't have to render that effect while I'm trying to refine the mask. Next, if we play it back, you'll see that the blood is moving too fast for what we want. So we did a retime to slow it down by throwing on time remapping and pulling the keyframes out until we had the length we wanted. And then for the final touches, I added a handheld look by placing everything in a pre-comp, then alt clicking the anchor point and adding the expression wiggle, open bracket, one, comma, 18, then close bracket. After that, we add our color grade, which ties everything together nicely since we're making it nice and dark. And finally, our widescreen bars, and we have... Next up is this shot. First, we get our shot, then our blood asset, bring all that in After Effects, and then make a solid layer, which color doesn't matter for this. Then we'll position the layer so that we have our plate on the bottom, the solid in the middle, and then our blood splatter at the top. Turn off the transparency of the blood splatter layer and on the solid below, turn track matte to alpha add. And now we have the blood splatter, which is using the alpha information on the layer above it. Now on the solid layer, add a gradient ramp. We use a dark red and a light red with the lighter red in the area that was directly in the light and the darker red in the shadows. Next, we'll pre-compose both the solid and blood splatter layer and then set that pre-composed layer to multiply. Then we can mess with the opacity if need be. After that, we're gonna mask out the staircase or anything else that's in the foreground, making sure that our mask edges are as soft or as hard as the thing that we're masking around, which we're gonna match this just by using feathering. The good thing about doing it this way with the pre-comp is that if you need to make changes to the blood, like swap out the shape or the color, you can do it in the other comp and it won't affect all the masking work you just did. And the last thing I wanna point out is that since we have the blood in a blending mode, you'll notice that when the flashlight beam goes directly over it or when the blood is in the shadow, we either have it lit up or darkened, which adds some nice realism to the shot. But that is how we made a bloody mess without the mess. Now we sponsor, then we nay nay. Domain.com is where I go to register all my domains and now they have .club, which .club is universal and understood globally. It's perfect if you're building a business or you got a film that you're trying to start. Anything on the internet's all about community and collaboration, which makes .club perfect. Plus .club is only $9.99 a year. Thousands of options are still available. And if you use your coupon code FILMJUMBO, you get 35% off new domain registrations, which is a limited time offer. So make sure you jump on it. It's only good till November 30th. And when you think domain names, think domain.com. Logo. And the last thing we're going to talk about is the ghost voice right here. Yeah. 
I did this one easily enough and you could do it in just about any bit of editing or audio software. First, I brought my clip of my actor saying the lines in. Why did you leave? I had her say it monotone, but kept her voice mostly normal. That way it never feels forced. I'll let the processing add all the creepiness for me. So inside my software, the first thing I'm gonna do is slow the speed of her voice just a bit. This is gonna give us a sort of off feel to the voice. Why did you leave? Next, I'll add a chorus effect and tweak to preference. This is gonna make the voice feel a bit more full, gives it sort of a several voice vibe, but in a nice subtle way. Why did you leave? Next, I'll add some reverb and then duplicate this clip twice and stack them all on top of each other. After that, I'm gonna add a pitch effect to each of them. On the first voice, I'm gonna pitch it up slightly to give it more of a childish tone. The middle will be much deeper and the bottom even deeper than that. Then I'll pan the middle track a touch left and the bottom track a bit right. And now we should have a pretty creepy sounding ghost voice. Why did you leave? It's crazy simple and you can also have more stuff to customize it however you want. You could duplicate one of the tracks again and reverse it to give it more odd chatter in the background or toy around with some delays. There's a ton of different ways you can customize this sort of effect. Just start throwing stuff in and tweak that to see how it affects your clip. Logo. And that's it for today. Just a reminder, we have two weeks left until this year's Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. Tons of crazy sales and some new stuff. So definitely go right here to see more info and I'll see you guys next week when Oliver Platt has to defuse the bomb.